All right, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Wednesday morning's edition of Ask the Master All Technician, and every day I talk about something different. Karen Schoen will be calling in a few minutes, but before she calls, antifreeze. That seems to be a topic that, well, we, we think about it only when we see it on our driveway or when our check engine light, or excuse me, overheating light comes on. That's about the only two times we think about it, but we really should think about it more often. About every two years, every 30,000 miles, whichever comes first, you really should exchange your antifreeze. I'm not talking about a drain and fill. I'm not talking about where you put a water hose in it. I'm not talking about doing anything like that. What I'm talking about doing is hooking it up to a machine and actually where you pump the three to five gallons of fresh clean antifreeze through your car while it's running and the old antifreeze comes out into a bucket and you can dispose of it properly. That's what they'd like to see you do about every two years, every 30,000 miles on a severe service. I know your owner's manual says you're good for five years or 150,000 miles under normal service, but I'm going to tell you, none of you in the sound of my voice are normal drivers. It's not, I'm not saying that because you're erratic, mean, you know, unstable driver. I'm talking about you do short trips, the car doesn't get hot enough. Uh, you know, you're doing just, you know, you're doing what people, what I call normal driving, but it really, they consider that severe service. They really, it, short trips are severe service, hot, dusty climate, rainy, wet climate. Um, you know, all these things that we think are normal part of driving in the, in Northwest Florida is considered a severe service. So cut that in half and it's supposed to be every five years or every 150,000 miles, you better do it every two and a half years or every 75,000 miles. Now, I don't think you're going to get 75,000 miles in two and a half years, but I bet you can get two years on it during that time. And really changing the antifreeze is like putting money in the bank. I see people that come in here, they've got the original antifreeze in there at eight years old. Eight, I'm serious, I'm not making this up. And they said, well, I'm just going to get it exchanged. I said, well, you can exchange it, exchange it but your radiator, I'm giving you a heads up, isn't this fish isn't as efficient as it used to be. When your car came from the factory sitting still on an 80 degree day with the cooling fans both on, air conditioning on, windows rolled up, a load on the engine, you were getting around 35 to 40 degrees of heat was being taken care of out of the car, out of the radiator. Right now, we've checked it out. Your car is eight years old. You're getting rid of about 25 degrees of heat. So it's dropped 10, it's not getting rid of 10 degrees of heat. And you may say, well, big deal. That's only 10 degrees. Well, 10 degrees means the transmission's running 10 degrees hotter. For every 10 degrees hotter you run your transmission, you literally take years and years and years of life out of a transmission every 10 degrees. If you can keep the transmission fluid below 170 degrees, we would never ever tear into your transmission. But the reality is most people don't keep it below 170 degrees. And so when they get a lot of miles on a car, and I do say a lot of miles, maybe 150, 200,000 miles, they're buying a transmission long before they replace that radiator. And the radiator is the cause of it. And the radiator is the cause of it is because it's not getting rid of heat. And the reason the radiator is not getting rid of heat is because of slime on the inside, not calcium and, and travertine buildup like we used to have uh, on a, the older model silica based antifreeze. Today's antifreeze are either they're going to be, this is an orange antifreeze. This is what would be found in General Motors and some Fords. It's an oat. It's organic acid technology. Whereas on the Hondas, you have a blue antifreeze, which is, uh, is going to be what's called a HOT. It's got hybrid organic acid technology. Now, you've got a few others out there, which I don't have in front of me, which are considered POTS, poly organic acid technologies. And the thing about them, they're not as they're not as poisonous as oats and hoats and IAT. IAT is something I haven't talked about. Inorganic acid technology. That's right. That's the old green Presto antifreeze we bought and used for years and we trusted. And we, every time we'd see it on a driveway, we'd go, oh, another water pump. Well, the thing about it is those are great for older model cars, but don't let a shop talk you into putting green antifreeze in where your car had the gold. I mean, it had this this orange color like General Motors has. I know I at one time in my life, back 97, 98, I thought that was the way to go. Get rid of the orange, and we, which we affectionately na named Death Kill, not Dex Cool. Uh, Dex Cool is the name brand of it, but we called it De Death Kill because every time we turned around, we were changing intake manifolds. 
And they said this antifreeze is good for five years, or intake manifold gaskets. They said it's good for five years, 150,000 miles. Well, here we were at 75,000 miles in five years and changing intake manifolds. So the rumor, the, the rumor, the, the notion that this is good for five years, 150,000 miles, it is only good for one, whichever comes first. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, if you don't change this every two to three years, you get to visit me and or somebody and spend a lot more money needlessly to replace a water pump, intake gaskets, a radiator, all these wonderful things because what ends up happening is this becomes very corrosive, not to metal, but to plastic. Something happens. After about two and a half to three years, it starts turning on the, on the nylon 6.6, .6, which the intake gaskets are made out of, which is your radiator tanks are made out of, those plastic tanks, the impeller on your water pumps made out of. So if you don't want to have continual problems, get your car on a regular maintenance schedule where every two and a half to three years, you're changing your antifreeze, you're changing all the fluids that are in your vehicle. You shouldn't let brake fluid stay in there that long antifreeze you wouldn't dare do your engine oil that long so why do you continue to let brake fluid or differential fluid or transfer case fluid or any of these other fluids that you know that are oils that you have in your car and you let them stay in there for three four five six seven eight years and all of a sudden you wonder why you're buying an automatic transmission or why you're buying a differential or transfer case is because of lack of maintenance if you would actually do the things that are necessary and be proactive and change the fluids, whether it's a differential, the transfer case, the engine oil. I mean, engine oil, everybody changes engine oil. We did a great job of promoting three years, 3,000 miles for a long time on changing oil and telling people they need to change their uh, oil every 3,000 miles and then rotate their tires every other oil change. Well, things have changed since then. Now we're changing oil every five to 6,000 miles using full synthetic oil, not regular conventional oil and we're rotating our tires every time we change our oil which is 6,000 miles. I had a lady come in yesterday and said well I thought I was supposed to change my oil every, excuse me rotate my tires every other oil change. I said yes ma'am that's right when you were running regular oil in your car every oil, every other oil change we rotated your tires. Now you're going 6,000 miles between oil changes not 3,000 miles so we're going to do it every oil change. And that's not what the manufacturer recommends on tire rotation. Honest to goodness, now, I'm not making this up. They recommend every six to 8,000 miles to rotate and balance your tires. If you don't do that, they're not going to warranty your tires if they get a noise, if they get a cupping action. They're not. They're going to, they're going to say, you're, you didn't follow the rules on how it works. And yes, you must rotate your tires if you want to keep your car safe and dependable. That's not an option. That's how it works. The reason when you rotate your tires, also, you're, besides rotating where they won't get a wear pattern on them, you're actually checking the suspension and brakes when you rotate your tires. You can see what's going on right there. And any technician worth, worth their salt is going to check your ball joints, your idler arm, all these things on there, if you've got them, to see if they're wore out. Because he may get the option to sell you a part that needs to be done. Now, if there's nothing wrong with your car, I don't want them finding parts that aren't wrong. But you'd be surprised how often we see cars come in here that have just had alignments done. Just had them done and we find ball joints about ready to fall out of them. I'm going, how did you get, how did they do an alignment on this? I don't know how they did it. But the, you know, the ball joint's got a quarter inch play in it. I, I just, it blows me away how some people can do work and not do it correctly. It's like, you know, people would change the antifreeze and this, if it comes with orange, they'll put it in green. Or if it comes in with blue, they'll put it in orange. Or it doesn't matter to them. I am starting to see, which I am surprised to see, a lot of the shops here in town are actually putting in the correct antifreeze for the car. I had a customer come in yesterday said, I had my antifreeze changed. I listened to your show. I know this is the Nissan. I think they put in gold. I said, gold? Why would they put in gold for? I don't know, but I think they put the wrong color in. I checked it out. No, sir. They put the right color in. They put the right type of antifreeze. They put in an antifreeze, an extended life antifreeze made for Nissans. It's the right color. It's the right everything. Nothing wrong with that. Now, the 10W30 oil they put in your car, I'm going to shake my head at that. No car out there calls for a 10 weight oil when it's cold. There's a bunch of them out there that call for zero weight. There's a bunch of them out there that call for five weight, but no 10 weight when it's cold. 
10W30 means it's a 10 weight in the winter when it's cold. We don't want a 10 weight when it's cold. We want a 5 weight. The thinner the oil, the better. That way it can lubricate much quicker and better. You know, they got 0W16 oils out there now. It's a 0 weight when it's cold, and when it's hot, it's a 16 weight. They got a 0 26 weight. When it's cold, it's a 0 weight. When it's hot, it's a 26 weight. You're sitting there going, what? I've never heard of that. Honest. Things are changing. I got people out there that never heard of using anything but 20W50. They think 20W50 is the right oil to use in your car. I see them coming here about once a month, and I just shake my head and say, nothing I can do for this check engine light you have blinking. Not check engine light. This oil light you have blinking because, well, you've wore the engine out. You've been trying to run 20W50 in a car that was designed for 5W20. You've done it to yourself. Just because your father or your grandfather or someone taught you were supposed to do something a certain way doesn't mean you should continue to do that. Things change. I mean, just look around you. I mean, newspapers, you know, they've gotten smaller and more expensive. I mean, things change. I mean, nothing stays the same. If you don't stay current on the evolving technology changes or competing technologies, and that's what they are, they're competing technologies, you know, who's got a better product than the other. And if you mix these competing technologies, you will be in for a rude awakening when you have to replace that radiator at six years old instead of 10. You'll be in, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Please, if a car calls for certain antifreeze, put that antifreeze in there. If a car calls for a certain kind of oil, put that kind of oil in it. You know, err on the side of caution. If your car calls for a blended oil, a minimum of a blend, what the heck's wrong with putting in a full synthetic? Now remember to have a blend, all it takes is two drops of synthetic oil to make it a, a blended oil. Now, it's a good oil, don't get me wrong, but it ain't half the oil that a full synthetic oil is. So, you have the option. Pay a little bit more now to get things done correctly. At a, you know, like changing the oil, using full synthetic, using the right antifreeze, doing it more often, every two to three years, getting your oil and all your fluids changed throughout your car. Or you can wait till you have five to six years on your car and your car needs a transmission. It needs an engine. It needs a differential. It needs a transfer case. It needs all these things because, well, that $1,000 worth of fluid that you'd have spent over the last five, six years is now going to cost you fifty to sixty thousand dollars to buy another truck. It's your call. Fluids are much cheaper than metal, as my friend Dennis always tells me. I, 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 it's so true. He told me that expression years ago. It's what his father taught him, and it still holds true today. If you don't change the fluids, you're going to end up replacing the metal parts in there because that's the purpose of the fluids to keep the metal from making contact with each other. You wouldn't believe it or not, but when you have oil and fluids between it, that's good. Oil's not, I mean, the metal's not actually touching. It's riding on these little ball bearings of oil molecules, and they don't touch. The metal doesn't. And so you have this wonderful lubricating ability that gets rid of heat, seals things up, does a great job of doing what it's supposed to do. But over a period of time, these things get depleted, all the way from engine oil down to antifreeze. Even transmission fluid, after a little while, it may look good, but you, have bu you can have bubbles in it. That means the anti-foaming agents are depleted. And normally we see that after about two to two and a half years, we see that even though the fluid looks perfect, if there's bubbles in it, <clears throat> normally we'll experience harsh shifting sometimes from first to second, or sometimes second to third, that's due to bubbles or aeration inside the transmission. Hey, this is James Morin Morris, Karen Schoen should be calling in a minute. So if you've got a car question, pick up that phone dial, 850-763-0555, or just call and be a part of the show, and we'll be right back. Summer is here and the days are getting longer and hotter. Call James Auto Center for a free cooling system evaluation and consultation. Give us a call, 850-763-0555 today. Part of what I'd like to let you know is what we do and how we work our system. Basically, we've got about 700 stocking dealers scattered around the 15 counties here in the Big Bend area of the state. I run a fleet of trucks, vans, and what we call a hot shot vehicles to deliver to our dealers quickly so they can help service you as fast and efficiently as they can. Provide timely and efficient service and we're there to take care of our dealers who in turn can take care of their customers. Thank you. If you want the best deal in town for tires, you need to call Baytown Tires at 873-8900. 
Hanson and the guys at Baytown Tires take pride in serving Panama City for over 20 years. Baytown Tires on Highway 98 in St. Andrews. All service work backed by a nationwide warranty. All right, good morning. Welcome back to our Wednesday morning show. And every Wednesday I have Karen Schoen call from her homestead up in Greenwood, Florida, where, she, where men are men and, well, they have to pump daylight up there too because she's so far back in the woods. But anyway, good morning, Karen. How you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm trying to figure out why the weeds grow faster than the regular fruit. You say that while the weeds grow faster? That's just the way it is. If I don't water my grass and I don't pay attention to it, I have the prettiest, I have the prettiest weeded lawn you've ever seen. Only the, only the weeds grow. I mean, that's the only thing I have growing out there. But I, growing, growing grass in Florida is hard, but you can grow weeds really easy. You really can. I mean, they are amazing. <laughs> Up they are ripping cranny that you don't want. Now, tell me about last night's show. Every Tuesday night for a listening audience, Karen has up on blog. It's blog radio. Is that what it is? Where the blog talk radio. Blog talk radio, and uh, tell everybody a little bit about it. Then talk about what the last night's show was about. Well, we like to. Ta- I like to take one topic mm-hmm. and thoroughly investigate it because I feel that. People are too in tune with uh, talking points, and everything is done in uh, 250 characters or less. (laughs) There's no depth behind anything that we're doing. Hmm. People are doing without understanding why they're doing. Uh, Last night's show was devoted to education, and uh, we were talking about, well, it, it really started, we were talking about the incident that happened in Europe yesterday, over the weekend. Okay. And this, to me, is extremely scary and an indication of things to come. A young man who was a journalist, his name is Tommy Robinson, was arrested for covering a trial. Now, the initial trial, the judge said he didn't want any um, any media there. They, it was a closed, mm-hmm. a closed trial. Nobody, no media, nothing. So hmm. this a journalist managed to get himself not into the trial. He was filming outside the trial. Now, what was this trial about? In London, there were 26 um, perpetrators who were cited for pedophilia on over 600 young girls in the last couple of years in what they call a grooming club. This is a new thing that's going on. They take the girls, they abduct them, and they groom them. And by grooming them, they do not, I do not mean they take them out to go buy a prom dress. Right. By grooming them, they are pumping them with drugs and with alcohol so that they become addicted. And then they sell them as slaves, as sex slaves, or they keep them for themselves as sex slaves. Now, I, I did not know this was happening this weekend. I, 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 I was working. I guess I just didn't pay attention. Well, to this young man, they scooped him up off the street, brought him to court within a couple of hours, tried him with a trial that lasted less than four minutes, and put him in jail for 13 months. Wait, now, what country is this in? Because I can't think yeah, of Yeah, that's the heavy-duty thing. What country was yes. this in? It was in England. This happened in London. I think he was denied due process, I'm betting. Uh, it, yeah. <laughs> I, especially since there's no discovery. There's, Nothing. Uh, and there's also it's a victimless crime, I'm thinking. Yes. You what this? The judge ordered a media blackout, not just on him, but on the entire trial. Why is this? Now, put that together with what happened yesterday. Okay, this was a, a group of, this a trial in London was a group of Muslim men. What happened yesterday? Well, Roseanne happened to make a comment. What was her comment about? Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of ah, the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, is, isn't it a fact that she does have connections with the Muslim Brotherhood? In, in, in yes. I, I mean, this is a this is a bona fide this is a fact. fact. 
an absolute fact. Yes. yes 100% this is yes. a fact. Valerie Jarrett has connections to the Muslim That's Jarrett. a documented fact. But I don't know about the Planet of the Apes, but I mean, I, I saw that movie yeah. in the sixth grade, but I don't... But, I, yes. you know... Rose Van was taken off the air for basically telling the truth and adding satire. She, she was a comedian, and sometimes comedians do stupid things, and those of us that grew up with Roseanne knew that this is Roseanne. This is what she does. And she does this is this nothing new yes. from her. No, it is not. She can be very abrasive. She can be very crude. And she does, I mean, that's what she does. I mean, look at the one that did the presidential uh, reception the other day, uh, the one that made all the bad jokes. At, uh, yeah, well, Wolf. Yeah, I mean, I mean, come on now. I mean, I thought. I mean, we got right now on our our, our mayor on the beach has threatened a, um, a Bernie Thompson who was out there interviewing him about code enforcement, about him getting a ticket, and the mayor looks at him and said, "One day, Bernie, you're going to die." Now I'm sitting there going, if someone has that much power in political office, tells me that is that a death threat? Are they that part? Is, of, is that part of the yeah. mafia? You know, the un, the deep state. Okay. Now let's bring this home because there is an incident in the Moses School in New Haven. Now, yes. The kids yeah. yes. are going to, they were in the drama club. So they opened up the prop closet. Yep. And they were playing around, and one of the kids took a, a rope that I guess was used on a mannequin to illustrate a death scene, whatever. Mm -hmm. And she was playing around, they were playing around, and they put it on a girl. Well, the girl happens to be black. Mm. So now it is being blown way out. But guess who else is involved? Uh, who? The Muslim Relation Care. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How does Muslims get involved in this? Yeah. Okay. How yeah, this is, this, is, this is what we have facing us right now. I know the NAACP, Rufus Wood, got on there talking about how we need... And I'm going... Uh, to me, this is much to do about nothing. It's the drama club. That's where drama exactly. happens. And exactly. <laughs> we're getting drama exactly. from the drama club. Come on now. This is orchestrated. This is so much infighting about nothing. It, 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 to me, it's nothing. I mean, kids are kids. So if someone takes a prop and throws it on some people, I don't think they meant it maliciously. Well, since no, you weren't there. No, I don't there. think they did either. And um, if they did, then it becomes a learning experience. Yeah, you if don't, is yeah. Create, if, if someone creates a bad behavior, then you sit down and you talk to them about their behavior and why it's bad and why they shouldn't be doing that and the point in history, which, of course, when you eliminate history, then you can fill it with all kinds of uh, ridiculous claims and equating. So now it becomes everything that's said. If I don't like it, it becomes a racist remark. Well, yeah, it's kind of... Well, it's and like... What happens when that happens is when there is really a race issue, it becomes ignored. Is it kind of like the Weather Channel saying that we're going to have a major hurricane down yeah. here and all this and everybody <laughs> over a period of time getting ready for it and all of a sudden we get two inches of rain and 30 mile an hour gusts and all of a sudden we go, wait a minute, that wasn't the truth. And so the next time they do it, they keep crying wolf. Eventually we get tired of it and say, yep. I don't think they're talking about truth. I think they're talking about ratings. Maybe this is the same thing. Maybe it's going to take people just saying, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Shut up. You know, we're that's, not that's exactly what it is. That's what it takes. It takes people to wake up and say, I'm not going to do that yeah. anymore. I'm not going to give in to this anymore. I'm not going to accept it anymore. When people start talking to me about climate change, I remind them now that this is being brought to you by the people who can't even predict the hurricane correctly. Well, it's, <laughs> yes, we can go down that road, too. I'm sitting here thinking about climate change. I, you know, you were talking about that. I've been watching a lot of programs lately from the BBC talking about the polar, you know, how it's getting melting. And something they're mentioning that seems to be ignored is Iceland is rising one centimeter a year. Did you know yes. that? It's well, it doesn't fit their narrative. Well, no, it's it rising one centimeter a year. And, you know, they talk about it. They say it's because of global warming and the ice melting. But then again, they'll turn around in another program and talk about how uh, the Yellowstone Park, the, the, the lake is rising and it's flooding because it's rising, it's elevating because of the magma underneath the, 
that. Could it be possibly that the ice caps could be melting because maybe the magma is, <laughs> is growing, you know, making it getting closer? I don't know, but the only thing I'm saying is we had, we had warm it periods is, before. It is definitely a contributing factor, and that's what happens when facts are left out. Well, yeah, there's a lot of facts left out. There's a lot of facts left out on, I think it, they really want us fighting amongst ourselves over silly mm -hmm. issues. And yes. while they turn around and, you know, it's kind of like a sleight of hand. Watch what's happening up here where they do things underneath our back, behind our back, so to speak. And I am just kind of like, when are we going to realize that we are actually being played for fools? We are. We're being played. We are, we are being played. We are absolutely being played. And that was the other thing that we were talking about last night, which is about action and uh, how we are putting together a group of four committees, one of them facing the challenges in the textbooks, another one discussing how to present the information properly, another committee to discuss how to get it out in the media, and another committee to work on legislation. So anybody that's interested, please contact me. Yeah, that's um, a negative contact your care. My number is 954-864-0530. We need help. We need people. Be a part of the 20 percent. Well, that's what it's going to take. It, it's going to take people becoming involved, but too many people don't get involved. And it's easy. Sometimes you get so burned out, even myself, you get pulled at by so many different people wanting to hear and there. Eventually, you just say, there's only so much of me to share. And I know you feel the same way sometimes. I know you're being pulled at from so many different angles, but I appreciate you hanging in there. Because I don't think I'm as strong as you are, Karen. I just get burned out sometimes. Just go, this is ridiculous. These people, you know, why should I care if no one else cares? It, it, sometimes no, I feel that's, that. that's the other part of it. But then we also should look at who's actually driving this. And we find out that the people that are behind this are usually less than 1% of the population. And yet they're dictating what the population should be doing. Hmm. What's wrong, especially if we live in an Equal democracy? Well, oh, we, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> if they keep on telling us, we believe in equality and we are in a democracy. Well, if you're in a democracy, how does 1% rule 99%? Well, it's mob rule. We know that, right? And that's yeah. what they, it's, it's mob <laughs> rule. And the reality is this. If we don't pay attention to what's going on, they slide, I mean, they slide everything over on us and we're supposed to sit there. And a lot of people are starting to get tired of it. People are getting tired of, the, give an example, the Weather Channel. Someone would say, well, you know what we need to do? We need to do what Panama City Beach does. They, they, ban, uh, they ban scooters. They ban spring breakers. Let's ban the Weather Channel and maybe we won't. <laughs> You know, I and it's, it clear up. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, I mean, every time you see Jim Cantori, there goes your revenue. If you're going to have a holiday, you know, it's going away because no, when he shows up, everybody goes away. Uh, yeah. And I should I mean, I, I can't pick on him, but it does seem like that. We get two inches of rain. And it's, I think Andalusia, Alabama, got more weather than we did here in Panama City, Florida. Uh, That's true, and also look at what happened in Maryland. How sad! Oh Lord, I saw that two years ago. They had the same thing they happen. They were in the same place. Now, wouldn't you think somebody would have learned from that? That like maybe they're doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, what, what are they being told? What were they told? Well, this is a thousand-year flood, so it's never going to happen again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got some. I got some high and dry <laughs> land down there, up up there, and. Uh, on the, on, in the swamps, I can say you too. Anyway, I got to get out of here. I, I'm up against the clock. Karen, I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.